Welcome everyone to West Explains Best. We're gonna be doing a Khan Academy exercise today. Uh, this one called rotating a point around the origin. You need to have some trigonometry background just as a quick reminder. If we have a right angle and a triangle, right triangle is what they're called. Uh, let's say this is our reference angle, that's our theta. This would be the adjacent side, uh, opposite side. And then we also need to know sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and then lastly we know that tangent, I don't think you need to know this one, but we'll light it down, write it down anyway, it's opposite over adjacent. Okay, so the problem at hand is point P is at one zero, point P is rotated by 80 degrees counterclockwise, that's a positive rotation about the origin to point P prime. What are the new coordinates of P prime? So we're rotating here, uh, this is a distance of one. Now as it rotates, it maintains distance, so this is gonna maintain that distance of one, but what are the coordinates? We don't know the coordinates, that's what we're here to figure out. The key to this problem is drawing a triangle from our new coordinate and making it a right triangle. Why is that important? It's important because when we have that right triangle drawn, we know two things. One, we know that the vertical distance between this x-axis right here, there's our x-axis, to point P is going to give us our y value. That distance right there, that vertical distance, is our y value of point P prime. The other thing we know is this horizontal distance from the y-axis to point P prime, also up here, same, same thing, is going to be our x value. That's going to be our x-coordinate of point P prime. Now, luckily for us, those two side lengths are the side lengths of the triangle that we have just drawn. And actually, I'm gonna change this color to, whoops, I'm gonna change this color to green just to show you that's point P prime up here. So that's point P prime, this is the distance of one, and we should probably label everything in terms of this 80 degree angle. Remember, this is 80 degrees because it told us in the problem so this is our point of reference, meaning this is our opposite side, this is our adjacent side, and this is our hypotenuse. Okay, where do we go from here? Well, we know our hypotenuse, our opposite side, sorry, is y, and our adjacent side is x. We just need a trig ratio then to help us find the rest of this problem, find the rest of the remaining values. Sine of x, or sine of an angle, we already said, sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So we know that sine of 80 is going to be equal to our opposite side y over our hypotenuse, which is 1. The good thing here is because it's 1, we can just kind of erase it. Anything divided by 1 is just itself. So opposite over hypotenuse, y over 1 is just y. So we just type in sine of 80 into our calculator and it's gonna tell us what the y coordinate is of this particular uh, coordinate. In this case, y equals 0 0.98. So it's a distance of 0.98 up. It's not all the way to one, it's gotta be less than one because that's the distance from the origin to that diagonal point. But uh, in this case, it's a little bit less. Now we're gonna go on to the adjacent side. For adjacent side, we need a different ratio, so we're gonna use cosine, because that's adjacent over hypotenuse. X over one. Divide by one is the same thing as just having X. So we honestly just need to type this into our calculator, and we're gonna get X equals 0.17. So 0.17 is the X coordinate of this new point. So 0.17, and then 0.98 for the Y, 0.98. And we're gonna check that out. All right, next question. Very similar process. I think they're gonna give us most of these values of one is rotated by an unknown value clockwise about the origin to point P. What are the coordinates of P prime in terms of theta? Okay, this is cool because it's asking us to understand this right triangle, triangle trigonometric concept. We know this distance is one, that's important. And we know that this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side. Now, which one is our x coordinate and which one is our y coordinate? I, our, uh, let's go y coordinate first. Our y coordinate is that vertical distance there, so that's gonna be our opposite side. 
okay? How do we find that opposite side in the previous problem? Well, we did sine of that angle. Okay, so that was our y coordinate, horizontal, or sorry, vertical distance. Now let's go to our x coordinate. X coordinate is that horizontal distance from the origin. Right there, that's where that's gonna be. In this case, it was uh, adjacent side, so that is gonna be the cosine of that angle. So cosine of theta is our uh, x coordinate and sine of theta is our y coordinate. And let's see if it's cosine is going of theta for our x coordinate is sine of theta for our y coordinate in terms of theta. Hmm. Maybe it wants a little bit more specific. I think maybe not sure what it's looking for here. We had a uh, distance of one, so cosine. So let's write out the full equation. Maybe it wants us to do the full thing. So cosine of theta is gonna be equal to uh, our adjacent side. So that's x over, that's our x value, over one. So one times cosine of theta is the same thing. I'm very confused. That's gonna be our x squared. Ah, I know why. Because it's gonna be a negative value for our sign. So we need to put that negative value in front of the sign. And this is where you have to work on it visually. Should have accounted for that. I'm glad I got it wrong. Just so you can see from my mistake, if we go down, that's a negative value for the y coordinate. Our x coordinate's positive there. So that's why it's gonna be negative for our sign. There we go. Now I feel better. Okay. Point P is rotated 130 degrees counterclockwise about the origin to point P prime. What are the coordinates of P prime? All right, so let's handle our, our Y coordinate first because our Y coordinate is positive here. We just had this problem earlier, just a second ago. So our Y is gonna be positive, but notice how our X is gonna be negative. We're gonna have a negative X here. Okay, now we need to draw our right triangle here. So that's 130, that makes this 50 degrees. I'm gonna use this 50 degree reference angle for this triangle. We don't wanna use that 130, we wanna use that 50 because 180 is a full, so we just need that 50 left to get that acute angle there. Opposite, again, is gonna correspond with our Y value and then adjacent is gonna correspond with our X value. Okay, what do we do from here? Well, we know we need a negative X value, so maybe we can look here. Uh, oh, it's talking about using the sign here. All these are in terms of 130, that's interesting. But when we're talking about um, of cosine of 130, I think it automatically gives us uh, a negative, let's see, a negative result. Let's go ahead and try it, one, cosine of 130, and that gives us a negative result. So we don't need a negative negative. This already accounts for that negative direction because the cosine of 130 is negative. Um, so cosine of 130 is negative already. We don't have to worry about that too much. And then we're gonna use the sine of 130 for our y coordinate. So sine is corresponding to the y coordinate, cosine with the x coordinate. Sine's already positive uh, in this quadrant two. Cosine is negative in quadrant two, so it's gonna be C. Okay, next question. Point P is rotated 25 degrees counterclockwise about the origin to point P prime. Run your answers. Okay, so we're gonna do, uh, we just need to do the sine for the Y coordinate. So sine for 25, that will give us 0.42. So all I'm typing in is sine 25 and I get 0.42, oops. And then for my X, I'm using cosine. So cosine of 25 and that's gonna give me 0.91. And they're both positive because they're in the first quadrant. Okay, next one. Uh, in terms of, pro of uh, theta, we already talked about this. It's in the first quadrant, so we can go ahead and say that it's cosine, and it's going to be positive, and then it's sine, and it's going to be positive also. Next question. Now we're in the fourth quadrant, and that's 36 degrees. Um, so cosine is going to be positive in this quadrant. 36, so we have uh, B, C, and D as possible answers there, because remember, cosine is related to our X value. And now we just need to decide um, which of these options it's going to be. So 
And 36, I'm pretty sure, sine of 36 is a positive value, so we can do a sine of negative 36, and that should do it for us. Because it will be a negative. So I just typed in uh, sine of 36, I got a positive. We want that to be a negative direction because we're going down. Okay, negative direction down. So we need to make that sign negative, just like we had in that other problem. Okay, last one. Point P is at one zero. Point P is rotated 36. Okay, and now we just need to do basically the same thing, but now we have a reference angle. So we're gonna do sine 36. Um, oh, we already, we already have that. How did I type? Oh, must have had this problem before. Sine of 36 is point. Um, we just need to put the, the actual values, but it's got to be a negative. Don't forget the negative, 0 0.59. And then this X is going to be positive, cosine of 36. And that's going to be a positive X value, and that's point 0 0.81. Okay, and we'll check that. All right, there we go. Keep the negatives and positives uh, straight as you do the X and Y values. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to check out more videos on this channel, especially with geometry, algebra 2, and other mathematical concepts. See you then.